Welcome to this installment of Just One Thing. Today I'm going to talk about the Windows Azure Virtual Machine or the Windows Azure VM role. My name is Adam Gerholsky and I'm a technical evangelist with RBA Consulting. Now, what is a VM role? What is the VM role? Well, it's a role that gives you full control over the OS image. In um, a couple of the, of the prior episodes we talked about um, web roles and worker roles and in those roles you don't really get control over the OS. There's a lot you can do. You do have admin access to those machines. So for example with the web role I can take complete control of IIS and script out anything I need. But in this case I get complete granular control over the OS image when I have a VM role. Which gives you the ability to upload your own customized Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise images. You can pre-build them on site and then upload them into the cloud. Now thing to note here is that we are talking about Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise images only. You can't use Windows Server 2008 SP2 images. You certainly can't use Windows Server 2003 images. There has been some talk about possibly supporting those, um, but nothing has been committed to. So for the time being, it's just Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise. Operators, you can reboot the images, re-image re them, remote desktop into them, just like you would any OS image uh, that or any virtual machine you may have on-prem if you're used to using VMs. But you do get some benefit from the automated service management, including service model enhancements um, that we'll talk about a little bit later. But the, the key thing to note with the VM role um, is that while you do have a lot of control, you do get some of the benefit. For instance, if my VM role, um, it's obviously running, it, it is a VM, but it's running on some hardware somewhere that's in a rack in a, in a Microsoft data center. If that rack goes down, um, if, some, if there's a problem with the rack or enough, or there have been enough failures in the rack where the uh, Azure Fabric controller says, all right, we're, we're shutting this rack down. We're going to move everything off the rack. Your VM will get shut down and move to a different rack. But it's important to note that your VM will get shut down. So if you're doing a lot of write to the writes to the local disk, um, you need to think about that when moving to Azure because when that VM gets shut down, it, it's not like the VM gets shut down and, and that image gets physically moved somewhere else. What happens is the fabric, the controller, will actually use the image you uploaded to the cloud, which is not the same image that was running on the machine. So it takes that base image that was uploaded to blob storage and uses that to spin up the new instance. So if, you have, if you're writing any data to local disk, it will not get... Cons it will not get persisted across instances. So you have to think about moving that to a more durable store before you use the VM role. In terms of the life cycle and how you actually use it, well, the first thing you do is you build out that VM image and you build it out on-prem. Um, you might, you probably want to sysprep it, kind of do all the typical things you do to build out a, a VM, so a VHD file. Once you've done that, you create the service model. Um, you do that in Visual Studio, um, create a, an Azure, a Windows Azure project, and you add a VM role to it. You then upload the image. So th this is key. You store that VHD in Windows Azure Blob Storage. That way its instances get spun up. The controller can pull that instance out of Blob Storage and use it to spin up the VHD. Keep in mind there have been some initial issues with this. This feature is currently a beta feature. Um, in terms of upload, you know, images can be pretty big, it, you know, 30, 50, 60 gig, depending on what you're putting on that image. So it can take a while to get that uploaded. Um, but then once you upload, you can actually create differencing disks and only upload the differences if you need to. You then deploy the service. So once you've created it in Visual Studio and you've got the image uploaded in the cloud, you just deploy your service as you would any other service. You maintain the service. You can remote desktop into the images. You can reboot. You can actually re-image them. And then um, the important part is upgrading. So and I'm not necessarily going to say upgrade. I'll say patching. So if I want to apply a patch to that VM, I, you know, I could remote desktop into an instance of the VM that's running in the cloud and apply the patch. However, if I spin up a new instance, that instance is going to come from the, the VHD I have in blob storage that does not have the patch on it. So if I want to make sure I'm patching these VMs as they're running in the cloud, I actually need to create a differencing disk on-prem, apply the patch to it, upload the differencing disk into blob storage, and then re-image based on on the differencing disk. That way I make sure all my instances have the patch applied. Number of common questions when it comes to the VM role itself. First is will any Windows Server 2008 R2 based app work? The answer is no. The VM role, while you do have complete control, it does inherit some of the web and worker role restrictions. For example, the SLA, if you want SLA for 3.9s, you need to have at least two identical similar instances running. Not all applications can handle that. They can only have one instance at a time. 
as I mentioned previously, there's no durability of the OS image on hardware failure. So once again, if that application is writing to the local disk, if the hardware if the hardware goes down, if whatever reason an instance gets shut down, anything you had on the disk is gone. Um, and next time it spins up, it'll t- be taking that image out of that VHD out of blob storage, which doesn't have that local data that you were writing to disk. So it's really one thing you have to think about. Uh, the other thing you need to keep in mind is that you only get one public IP per service. So if you need multiple public IPs, this is not going to work for you. Other common questions. Does Windows Azure take care of everything when it comes to the VM role? Well, no. With the VM role, as I mentioned before, as part of the life cycle, you're still responsible for maintaining the VM. That means you're responsible for patching it and kind of maintaining it yourself. Additionally, Windows doesn't understand the health of the applications that are running inside your VM. It just knows the VM is running, unlike the web role where it can kind of monitor exactly what's going on with the website or the worker role, what's going on with the service, and determine, you know, is this bad? Do I need to shut it down? Windows Azure doesn't know anything about the apps running in your VM, so it can't really monitor the health and make decisions based on the health of the applications inside your VM. However, you do get the, the benefit of um, automated management tasks. So I, I talked about it before in terms of if, if a rack goes down where your VM is, it, it'll get moved around for you. So the, you do get some benefits with, with, the, uh, with the VM role in kind of the Windows Azure environment. In terms of pricing, uh, its price is the same as web and worker roles. In, uh, in the presentation I did on role overviews, I kind of went through the pricing models. Essentially, kind of 12, 24, 48, 96 cents an hour. That pricing still applies to the VM role. There's no additional price to run your own VMs in the Azure environment. In terms of licensing, uh, Windows is included in that CPU price. So if, you know, for that 12 cents an hour, that includes the Windows Enterprise or Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise licensing. If you have other applications obviously installed on that um, VM, you're responsible for the licensing terms of the application. You have to think, if I'm going to have two instances running, what's my licensing cost for that, etc. When should I use it? And this is probably the most common question I get, and I actually wanted to save it for the end. Because when people think VMworld, they start thinking about, oh, this is this is great. I, um, one of the things I could do is, I know SQL Azure has a 50 gig limit. I could install SQL on my own VM and deploy that out to the cloud. Um, probably not a good idea for a number of reasons, primarily due to the fact that the, the data on disk is not durable. It doesn't persist, persist across instances or you're going to lose all that data. Um, other people have asked, well, couldn't I host like a domain controller in the cloud? Probably not a good idea. SharePoint Farms, probably not a good idea. Uh, Microsoft gives you three um, scenarios where you should consider using the VM role. First is long running setup. So when I talked about worker roles, I said, well, one of the things you can do is you can use this thing called startup tasks, which I'll talk about in another episode, to install other components on the machine. I could do registry settings. I could do all kinds of things, install other software like expression encoder, do all kinds of setup tasks. Well, some of those setups take a very long time to run. And if if they could take, you know, 15, 20 minutes per setup task and it actually takes an hour for your VM to spin up, you're kind of losing some of that benefit of having elastic capacity. If, you know, each time I want to spin up an instance, it's going to take me an hour or hours rather than minutes. So maybe you want to create a VM that has everything pre-installed already so that way those instances can spin up nice and quick for you as you need them to to meet demand. Error-prone installations. Maybe you've got kind of a tricky custom app or the installer doesn't always work every single time. Um, And rather than installing as instances spin up because you're not guaranteed of the success rate, you create a VM with a known good installation on it. So that way you don't have to worry about checking if, if the install works each time a new instance starts running. Finally, manual interaction with installation. Um, there are some installs you, you can't script. And while the startup task feature gives you the ability to script out installs, um, some installers, for whatever reason, uh, companies have decided not to allow you to script them out. So in this case, you would need to create a VM and go through the manual install process to make it work. Now, so those are the three scenarios Microsoft um, recommends that you use the VM role for. I would argue that you're giving up an awful lot to to take complete control. 
especially around OS patching, you're really kind of putting more work on yourself, and that's not the goal of the Windows Azure environment or the platform. Um, in terms of long-running setups, I'd take a look at the setup and see how you can streamline it and see how long is it really taking. Um, if it's only taking an additional five minutes, I'd say that five minutes is it's worth waiting an additional five minutes for a new server to spin up rather than having to maintain an entire OS and, and deal with kind of the the life cycle that that's required for VM role. Error prone installations, um, to me, I would say fix the install rather than you know, dealing with um, issues and trying to get a good known install state, I'd say let's try and get the install fixed so we don't have to deal with that. Unfortunately, the manual interaction with install, there's not a whole lot you can do there. So if you've got a piece of componentry you absolutely need and it requires manual interaction, then you're probably going to go be forced to go with the VM role. And that's it. Um, hopefully this has given you some good information about what the VM role is, kind of its various components, what you can do with it, answered some questions you may have, and also provided you the scenarios um, where it may be, it may be a good fit for you.